Hey everyone, it's your soul, and I'm carrying on my deep dive into all of the information that has surfaced regarding Jeffrey Epstein's connections through the US government, Israeli government, mafia, you name it pretty much, celebrities. It's it's quite a web, and this map I have put together from do various different documents, including the four-piece report by Whitney Webb on Mint Press News and various other places um, from my own memory and from suggestions from others. And before we start looking through this, it's important to recognize that I and probably most people looking at this are not in a position to prove a lot of the information that's been used to produce this. This, A lot of the information comes from mainstream media sources or books or web pages here and there that you know seem to have some authority on the subject but at the end of the day i would imagine that a fair amount of the information in here might not be exactly accurate at the same time there's probably a huge amount more information that isn't on here so with that said let's have a look at some of what is on here because i'm pretty sure a lot of it is accurate too um so we've got on the right here jeffrey epstein and some of these names you'll recognize if you've read the Mint Press news piece. People connected to him, Woody Allen, uh, Prince, alleged Prince Andrew, Windsor of England, Tony Blair's on there on his flight logs, Jean-Luc Brunel, operator of a um, modeling agency that he was connected to, uh, his brother there, Mark Epstein, uh, lots and lots of people here. It's the heir to the Johnson & Johnson um, industry business, who he apparently managed money for. Uh, we've got Bill Gates on there. Um, this is Rick Allen Jones, the engineer of Bill Gates, who was arrested at Bill Gates' mansion in 2013 for possession of 6,000 child abuse, child pornography images. The same year that Bill Gates was recorded as appearing on Jeffrey Epstein's flight log. So I'm not going to go through all of the people on here. It would take way too long. You can... Um, do that when I release this fully and one of the reasons why I'm putting this out apart from to let people know that I'm making it is because this app that I'm using Lynx L-O-I-N-K-S is quite limited it's, it's useful in that you can plot a lot of people on here and, and it lays them out in a way that isn't completely insane um, but it's not possible to put much more information than this on here so if anybody knows of a program that's like this that allows me to add on details for the relationships that's easy to read and extra information about each person and hyperlinks and things like that, then please do let me know. That would be very helpful. Please note that I specifically need something where the text basically is accessed when you click on something or hover over it because you can't really just use a normal mind mapping program that would require extra space to store all of these things permanently, visibly. That's just not going to work. So we've got many other people here. Uh, We've got Virginia Roberts Guffrey here, the girl, woman who uh, is in this court case against Jeffrey Epstein, and uh, I believe she's Lane Maxwell as well, or Jelaine Maxwell. And, you know, there's all these different characters who've been shown in photos with her, um, Naomi Campbell and so on. Um, Vicky Ward is the friend of Jelaine Maxwell who wrote a lot of the exposure pieces early on on Jeffrey Epstein, which I still haven't fully come to understand why she was doing that, given that she's close friends with Mac Gillian Maxwell, who's been alleged to be basically Epstein's kind of procurer of women. It seems a bit strange that um, that she would have done that. But OK, fair enough. I actually just noticed that Gillian Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein aren't connected on it for some reason. I think I must have deleted that connection by accident. I'll add that back in a bit. Um, so we've got here Ehud Barak, ex-Israeli Prime Minister, seen coming into Jeffrey Epstein's mansion with his face covered. Um, and the the number of connections in here and the, and the numbers of crimes that are likely involved in all of this is so vast that there's just no real way that I can even begin to cover it. Or you need to do your own research. I, I'll cover some of the stories before in, in my blogs and videos and probably no doubt I'll cover more in the future. Just... As a rough guide, if you come down here into the area for the American government, US government's here. Uh, I mean, you've got numerous presidents listed on here and um, heads of CIA and so on. And, you know, that, that covers the Iran-Contra thing, you know, the, the arms and cocaine smuggling around the world and Vietnam War and untold murders and crimes. So there's really no way to even begin to address it just as we skim through this. But 
I just want to draw your attention to some of the key specific things that are mentioned in Whitney Webb's work, which probably most people still aren't aware of. And I know that Whitney Webb's work is heavily suppressed in Google, like mine is and like a lot of people's are, is. That's another subject to itself. Um, if you want to know what I'm talking about, just go to Google and type Trump space flight space log and find out that you don't get any search suggestions for that phrase. And the same for Clinton flight log, but you will do on Bing. You'll get, you know, all these web pages pop up saying, oh, look, there's all these things connecting Trump to Jeffrey Epstein, but you won't get that on Google. You also won't get anything on Trump space Roy space Cohn, who I'm going to talk about shortly. You also won't get anything for Trump space psych or Trump space mental, as in mental health. They don't really want you knowing anything about Trump's mental health, apparently, but that's a digression. So, yeah, I just wanted to draw your attention, really, to three or four main nodes on this graph, because we've got down here Roy Cohn, who, if I move around, you can see how well connected he is to all these people. So he apparently was described by Whitney Webb as Donald Trump's mentor. His, and there's pictures of him with Roy Cohn while Trump was a relatively young man. And Roy Cohn died of AIDS. And he went back way back to the McCarthy period in American history of uh, you know the McCarthy witch hunts for communists. And then apparently, I didn't even know about this, but there was a similar one with homosexuals as well. The irony being that he was homosexual and he died of HIV. And yet he didn't have a problem with basically witch hunting gays from government. Not quite sure what that was about. But um, the point being that he apparently was involved in blackmailing politicians and a variety of people using pornography, sex, basically drugs, having them put into compromising positions at parties with gay people or maybe children and filming them. And he was basically connected to numerous presidents, Ronald Reagan, Nancy Reagan, you know, his wife, obviously. Um, Donald Trump, uh, we can see here, goes through to got Lynn Forrester Rothschild, who's connected to all these people as well. Uh, there's, there's just so many people, it's, it's a really big list. Um, but if we come up to the sort of north of, of him, we see Rupert Murdoch here, who's also connected into Reagan and other people. Uh, obviously a media mogul, much like Robert Maxwell, father of GLM Maxwell, uh, Epstein's apparent so-called boss of child abuse basically possibly allegedly uh, we've got J. Edgar Hoover in here uh, also connected to Roy Cohn um, and it said that Roy Cohn basically was blackmailing him um, so and Roy Cohn connected also to the Israeli government to Mossad and um, really you know also if we come over here to the mafia as well and really a lot of what has come out through the Mimpress pieces is a connection between US government mafia um, often through Roy Cohn, in fact, um, and this other secret group, which is the first time I'd heard of it, called the Mega Group, which is a primarily, as I understand it, Jewish group of billionaires and, and people of that nature, apparently said to include Steven Spielberg, um, this guy Ronald Lauder as well is very key in all of this, he's the heir to the Estee Lauder um, makeup kind of uh, estate and apparently very involved in various different political moves throughout his lifetime. We can see Eric Prince here, the owner of Blackwater Private Mercenary Company, involved in numerous extremely dodgy deals, uh, connected to George Nader, who was a prosecuted child abuser, known um, known for basically somehow simultaneously being involved in international politics after having been arrested for bestiality and child abuse. Uh, but if we follow Ronald Lauder here, it goes straight to Benjamin Netanyahu and also through to so many other people that are key in all of this, actually. Um, basically direct connection to the US government. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's way too much to go into all of this. But one of the key points is that the mega group connects directly into Edgar Bronfman and, Ch Bronfman and Charles Bronfman, who were the sons of Samuel Bronfman, who made his money apparently through alcohol prohibition and mafia things quite a while ago connected directly to or indirectly to these various mafia figures and they are related directly to dun 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 where's she gone um claire bronfman the same claire bronfman who was connected to keith rainier the nexium cult character involved with exploitation of women apparently and uh numerous basically a, a sex cult probably mind controlling aspects to it probably 
highly likely to be involved in CIA type operations. I'm pretty sure, I mean, I can't guarantee it, but I'm pretty sure that things like Scientology are very heavily connected with CIA. They've put so much resources into mind control. Obviously, they wouldn't want to waste an opportunity to have it rolled out on large numbers of people. Now, we've got this character here, Brandon B. Porter. If you haven't heard of him, he's a doctor. This story came out only a few days ago, I think. He's a doctor who was part of that cult, Nexium, who was basically carrying out illegal uh, experiments on people that were going there for help, as I understand it, including showing vulnerable women footage of people being dismembered and really, you know, things that aren't going to help them, basically. And, you know, it wasn't official science he was doing. It wasn't proper science. It was his own. I don't really know exactly what he was doing, but very dodgy stuff, reminiscent of MK Ultra trauma-based mind control, actually. I mean, it sounds a bit like he was trying to figure out how to do trauma-based mind control, to be honest, but... Uh, I don't really have a lot of information on that. But the interesting thing for me about this, one of the interesting things is that, you know, from that guy there, this crazy doctor through to Keith Rainier, this alleged sex cult guy, Claire Bronfman. So we can go from Claire Bronfman straight to Charles Bronfman, straight to the mega group. And then from there, it's pretty easy to get to probably most of the characters in, in American politics, to be honest. But you can go to Sheldon Adelson, the casino billionaire who is a direct funder, well, I think the biggest funder of Donald Trump's campaign. So the biggest funder of Donald Trump's campaign is a member of a secret group, apparently, uh, which includes somebody who is a direct relation of this woman, Claire Bronfman, who is a member of this sex cult. So you've actually, if this is tr correct information, you've basically, within two jumps, got to these people from Donald Trump. You know, I think that's relevant information. And you've also got this connection to George Nader connecting to, to uh, Donald Trump in one step. And he's a convicted child abuser, basically. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, basically, you know, people when you for a long time, I've been studying this this subject and people when you when you see this topic brought up in the past anyway, on, on social networks, people often ridicule it because they you'll find people saying, well, basically all of the top level people in government and sort of billionaire level people are all child abusers and and that invites ridicule because people think well that's just not possible there's so many people at that level there's no way they're all into it um and i would say that's probably true at the same time there's a massive over representation of child abusers in these in these levels of society it's not random it's not chance and i think it's pretty much guaranteed that a lot of the people that are in government are there basically because they've been blackmailed caught in the act or deliberately set up abusing children or things of that nature and basically these groups who want to have power over governments see to it that they get promoted in governments by their own people who are already compromised in those governments and you know that could be via secret societies it could be by their own groups that they set up in secret like this mega group it could be a freemason thing it could be a mafia thing it could be any number of different groups but ultimately, as long as they've got material to blackmail people with, then they know that they've got power over someone in government. Therefore, they've got power over government. And even better than that, you're not the person or that, that person doing the blackmailing isn't the person who takes the rap when things go wrong. So you can push your policies out into government, no matter how terrible they are. No one's going to call you a bad person because they don't realise it was you that invented the policy. And I think that's a big part of what's happening here. It's a big part of why it seems like no matter who people vote for the policies don't ever really change a great deal and i would say ultimately that's because the people pulling the strings are the same people it doesn't matter who who is elected to president or prime minister or even the party as long as they're blackmailed by certain people then they're going to be saying the same thing aren't they they've basically got a choice they can either take the job of being this pillar of society and get paid huge amounts of money and be set up for the rest of their life as long as they play things correctly and go along with what they're told to do um or they can get into that position and then try and get out of doing what they're told to do and then have the blackmail information come out or be killed. Or they can not go along with it and, you know, they've not really achieved anything. And I would imagine that once you're put in that position of kind of realising that people at the tops of governments are blackmailed and that's just how it is, you're, you know, if you didn't know that already and you weren't willingly going along with it, then you'd probably be in shock and suddenly you'd realise, well... I only have a certain limited number of options then, don't I? If I actually genuinely want to change the world, uh, which maybe some politicians do, then uh, you're kind of screwed, aren't you? You've Maybe you got drunk and got filmed doing something you shouldn't have done or whatever it was, they set you up. You're pretty screwed. So 
yeah, it's really a bad situation. And, you know, this is part of why my perspective on this is we need to evolve beyond government because government is just a, it's just a nightmare. Uh, I'm sure we can do better than that somehow, but, um, but for the moment it still exists. So I would say step one is to examine all of this stuff and really learn real history around all of this and prove what's, what's right and, and what's not right. And realize the weak points of these systems. Whenever you've got a hierarchy with a power pyramid, it's rife for for, for manipulation and crime and evil, basically. And it, the amount of evil that can be achieved through such a power system as a government is amplified massively over what can be achieved without one, pretty much. Especially when most of the people don't know that such evil is taking place and they just go along with it. Most people, you know, oh, I'm, I'm patriotic, I'll help my government and so on, without realizing, basically, they're, they're, organized, they're helping an organized crime group that's working against them. In many cases. So I'm going to add to this list as I get more information, probably move it to a different app at some point. Uh, we've got other things in here like Madeleine McCann connected to Rupert Murdoch. Uh, Madeleine McCann was a girl that was murdered, basically a British girl, um, went missing. And people have pointed out how one of the uh, kind of e-fits, the facial reconstructions of um, a woman who's wanted for an involvement with that case of her dis disappearance looks a lot like Ghislaine Maxwell, and she does actually. Uh, and also Tony Podesta as well, who was somebody who was implicated in the so-called Pizzagate and other issues. Um, and, you know, he's a guy who has all these weird paintings in his house of children really looking like they're being tortured and that kind of thing. I mean, I haven't even added a lot of the characters connected to all of that. You could probably double the size of this if you added on people to that from that. So I'm just going to add to this as, as, as more information comes to light and it's just going to keep going on and on and on, I imagine. We've got David Copperfield over here, just so you know, he had an island just up the up the ocean, so to speak, from Jeffrey Epstein in the same part of the world, also accused of raping women on his island, um, also up to very dodgy things, in my opinion. Also connected to Jeffrey Epstein in his little black book. Uh, we could go on and on. Adnan Khashoggi, the arms dealer. You know, there's, there was this so-called reporter who got dismembered in the embassy not so long ago. That was his nephew. Uh, you know, he's connected directly to Donald Trump uh, through the sale of his boat. And yeah, it just it's on and on and on. But if you've got any comments on this, if you've got anything you think I should add in, then definitely let me know. Like I said, if you know of any apps I can use that would do this better, then also let me know. And eventually I'll be releasing this for public use once it's you know more complete. I haven't seen anybody else achieving this sort of level of detail on this. It's very much needed. If you look through the documents on this, it's just there's so much going on, so many names, it's very hard to keep track of, and this really does help you understand, to some extent, how these different people are connected together and how they relate to each other and so on. It might help to identify connections that we don't know about either. Um, so yeah, if you've appreciated me doing this, please do support with a like, at the very least, and uh, a share and a follow if you don't already. And if you're on YouTube, please do hit the bell to receive more notifications from me in the future. And yeah, stay tuned. There's much more to come. Until next time, peace.